Let's take a look at whether SBR2 is polar or nonpolar. We know that bromine and sulfur, those are nonmetals, so it's going to be a molecular compound, but is it polar or nonpolar? So if we look up sulfur right here, that's 2.58, that's its electronegativity value. Bromine, 2.96. So they're pretty close. And we can use this general rule of thumb here to figure out whether it's polar or nonpolar. So we say if we have a difference of less than 0.5, we'll have a nonpolar compound. And this is less than 0.5, so we would say that this is nonpolar. But let's take a look at the molecular geometry for just a moment. So we'll consider the purple here to be our sulfur. We'll add two bromine atoms. They'll spread out. Looks like a linear molecule, except we still have those two lone pairs. So we drop those in, and that pushes everything down. So we end up with this bent molecular geometry. So remember that the bromines were a little more electronegative than the sulfur. So we'll have a slight dipole here. It won't be enough to make this a polar molecule, but there will be a little bit of a negative charge down here and up on the sulfur a little bit positive because of the difference in electronegativity. So even though it's nonpolar covalent, it's not too far from being a polar compound. Let's go back to our Lewis structure. So in answer to our question, SBR2 is going to be nonpolar covalent because the difference in electronegativity is less than 0.5. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.